Hi everyone, my name is Inez. You're very welcome here to listen to the word of God. Um, thank you for all your love and support with this ministry and all your prayers really means a lot and I continue to pray for you also. So we're in the month of May and I just released that word. If you want to have a look, it's all about grace. It's all about favor. It's all about keys, strategies and what God is doing for us. And God is moving and his angels are moving on your behalf because they're there to minister to you. So let me know where you're listening from. And other people love looking at the comments and being encouraged by that also. So let's get into this because it's quite lengthy. So, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we give you all the glory, Yahweh. We give you all the praise. Father, thank you for our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank you for Holy Spirit who teaches us and guides us. So, Holy Spirit, I ask you to lead me and guide me and speak through me in Jesus' name. And amen. So, the Word of God, something that God is doing, is healing. You see, God can heal physically. He can also heal our soul, our mind, emotions, emotionally, even our hearts. The Bible talks about he heals the broken hearts. He's close to those who are hurt. But you see, he's also been speaking about taking responsibility for your own actions. So you see, sometimes you can be going through something, but it's actually you that has put yourself there. Maybe through your character, but you just don't realise it. Even though you've heard it, you, you think it, but you sit there and you wallow in sorrow, but it's of your own doom. This is for some. But also things that people have gone through. You know, it's like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He knew he was going to be there. He was crying. He was afraid. There was blood coming from him because he knew what was before him. So there's a time that many can be in the wilderness, in caves, being broken, being hurt, going through things, maybe waiting, maybe just constant things happening all of the time. But this is a time of refreshing and a time of healing. And when God says to you that I'm with you, be strong and courageous, he actually means that. So there's times you mightn't feel, it's not all about feeling. You see, we don't go by feelings. We walk by faith. We don't go by what we see. We walk by faith in God. So there's times we have to step out and do things. There's times we have to attend things in order to get that healing or to listen to things or to invest in something. Whatever way the spirit of God leads you. So basically what God is saying is, you know, he's given the fresh mantles putting the armour back on the way it's supposed to be. Something that God was showing me recently. Um, the leaves, the healing of the nations. You know, I can't stress that enough that the more that you spend time with God, the more he restores you. Sitting there meditating in his presence, even just listening to some wor worship music or just speaking to him yourself. It doesn't have to be a religious prayer. I don't understand why people think that you have to do ritual one, two, three. Just sit there and talk to him. He's your father. God, I'm going through this. This is happening. What's happening? So there's many times he'll say, okay, this situation wasn't good, right? We need to work on that. Or maybe it's just, it is healing that you need in your heart. And also you see, God brings us through times of, of purging. And it's for our own good. It's so we go from glory to glory. But if you're not going to listen to his direction and instruction, you'll go around in a circle and it's something that we don't want. So God's promises to you are yes and amen, but we have to move forward. And you have to go with him, go with the flow. You're going with the spirit. So there's times that it, sometimes things feel lengthy. There's times you go through where you don't understand. Are you supposed to be here? Where am I supposed to be? But it's all about communication with the Lord. So this is the main uh, word that God has given for us is uh, the latter will be greater than the former. So there's times that you go through that's just horrendous. You go through betrayal. Look at Jesus. You just have to look at him in his life. 
and even towards the end when he knew what was coming before him, before he was filled with power on high, the resurrection power, he knew he had to endure certain things. But he endured it. He kept going. He could have said, okay, just no, this is actually going to be too hard. I'm not actually going to do this, okay? Leave them to it. They could do it themselves. But he said, no, just Lord, strengthen me. Angels came to minister to him. And he endured the cross. But just as Jesus rose again on the third day, he was filled. You see the difference. He's walking through walls. He's completely transformed. He looks completely different. So when we go through things, it could be horrendous, it could be grief, it could be betrayal, it could be loss, it could be loneliness, whatever it may be. But things always get better. So the glory of the latter will be greater. In Haggai 2 and verse 9, the latter glory of this house will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will provide peace, declares the Lord of hosts. Don't forget to be prayerful and spend that precious time just waiting on him, just spending time with the Lord. With your holy hands like this, just sitting there and just allowing him to do that work in you. But the blockage at times can be, you need to remember this, and I keep saying this, you need to check yourself. When you take communion, your character, you ask God, is there something I'm doing, something in me, just show me. That's not right. That's blocking the way. So like I said, there can be all these other things, hindrances, delays, things happening. All of these things. But sin, remember, blocks things. Your character, if there's bitterness, if there's anger, if there's rage, if there's jealousy, if there's unforgiveness. And then people can get into this situation of blaming others. So then they're bitter. They're in a fence. They're walking about with this darkness in there. You see, the Lord needs that out of the way. So what do we have to do? He's not sitting there condemning you. He's saying, you have to give it to me. But if you don't give it to me, you're going to carry this thing. So we make sure that all that's gone first and you're sitting there. You see, Jesus is there with his arms wide open. And he says, come to me. All you who are weary... I'll give you rest. My peace I give you. None of this world. You can look for the peace in all different things that you attend. But it's his peace. He's the one who restores. In Psalm 126 verse 5. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping carrying seed to sow. Will return with songs of joy carrying shares with them. Those who sow in tears. So it was the time when Jesus was in that garden on his knees. He was crying. He was afraid. So you see, we're in this new era, this new shift, where you go from level to level. New seasons, new doors. Sometimes people have to move. Sometimes you have to change. Sometimes you have to let go of things. Sometimes you have to say goodbye. And sometimes you'll have to go through things. And on this earth, there's consequences to actions. That's just the way it is on this earth. So make sure that we're right with God in our heart and in our mind. In Romans 5, 2 and 6 says, By whom also we have access by faith to his grace, where we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we glory in tribulations, also known that tribulation works patience. Patience experience, experience hope. Hope makes not a shame because of the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. So there's already love in us. There's already light in you. You are light. You're a child of God. You belong to God. So anything else that's blocking that needs to go. So... The Bible talks about tribulation, doesn't Jesus talk about you'll go through things, but I'm with you, don't be afraid, be strong, be courageous. And patience, so we grow, we get stronger when we go through things, but you have to acknowledge things as you're gone. Okay, this has to go, okay, I did this, I was like this, okay, I'm sorry about this, let's move forward. 
So remember, you belong to the Lord. This is not about you, it's about the Lord. But he has a plan and a purpose for your life and he wants to lead you there. So you can hold yourself back or by not moving forward. It's as simple as that. In Galatians 2 and 20, I am crucified with Christ. Remember the cross? You put it all down. You lay it all down. You come to God as you are. Addictions and everything. But there has to be a change. It's not about excuses. There has to be that change. So it gets crucified. You die to self. Nevertheless, I live. Not I, but Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. Fear is not of God. Anxiety is not of God. He brings peace, calm, anything else is the flesh. And that can cause problems. Or even running ahead of God, pushing things. And then when things are falling apart all over the place, you'll know that it was you. So where there's bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, frustration, all of this other stuff, that's not of God. God is a God of love and peace and order. So there's times we have to listen in life. You have to learn to listen to instructions. And the spirit of God where you're led by him. In John 14, 26, put the helper. So you have help. God sends people around you. There's angels ministering to you. But you have a helper. The Holy Spirit who the Father will send them my name. He'll teach you all things and bring things to your remembrance. To everything that I've said to you, Jesus said. So you could be sitting there. And this is all about relationship. Between you and God. God, what will I do today? God, wh where did I put this? What did I do? So you're talking to him and a thought will come into your head. But anything that's not good, anything that's evil, anything that's hate, it, that's murder in the heart. So if you're sitting there wallowing on all imaginations, thoughts that are not good, you need to let that go. Second Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith, not by sight. Proverbs 21, 21, he that follows after righteousness and mercy finds life, righteousness and honour. So remember God blesses faithfulness and obedience, but he's telling you that he's with you. It's times of healing. So allow God to do that work. So as we move further on, there's times of purging. So you have to allow God to do that. And that can be anything. Everyone has their their traits, their faults, but we have to allow God to do that work in us. And first Peter three and ten, eleven, for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, his lips from speaking um evil, let him put away evil and do good, let him seek peace and ensue it. So be the peacemaker, you know, to calm things down. And even in your own home. And even in your walk. And when something's bubbling up, whether it's something in your life, you have to give it to Jesus. So there's no point moaning day after day after day about something. Give it to God. And he'll probably tell you to step out and do something. So remember, his ways are not our ways. But he's leading you and he's guiding you. He doesn't leave you. He doesn't condemn you. He doesn't bash you. He's teaching you. Psalm 28, 7 and 8. The Lord is my strength, my shield. My heart trusts in him. He is my helper. So we don't put all of our trust in people. People will let us down. People can hurt. We can hurt ourselves. By the things we say, the things that we do. So that's why we have to be loving to others. Peace. Help. Learn to listen. Give when you can with each other. But what God is saying, the greater days are coming. The latter will be greater. So sometimes we have to go through things. Like I said, sometimes you won't know why, but give it to God. And there's people there to pray for you. So then we have Psalm 1. 
O tree, bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your inequities, who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with love and kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things, so your your youth is renewed like the eagle. So he strengthens. Remember, that was another word for the season. He'll give strength. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful. He's gracious. He's slow to anger. He's plentiness and mercy. He'll not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him, reverence him, stand in awe of him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. So Jesus paid the price for us. So we can't trample on what he's done for us. We must be grateful and thankful and understand what he done for you and for me. Like as a father, he pities his children. So the Lord pities them that fear him. He has that compassion. Remember, Jesus had compassion on others. For he knows your frame. He remembers that we are just dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field. So he flourishes. For the wind passes over and it's gone and the place thereof shall be no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them who fear him and his righteousness unto children's children. To such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength. Do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, you ministers of his, you, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all the works in the places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul. We give him glory, we give him praise, we give him thanks. Spend time with him in his presence. Just close your eyes and worship him. He will begin to minister to you, to speak to you, to correct you because he's a good father. So it's times of healing. So he's doing this. It can be supernatural. It can be suddenly. He can bring you to a place. He can bring you to people. But he's changing things. Things don't always stay the same. So you see, a lot of people don't like change. I never like to change, but I embrace it now because I always know that there's something better on the other side now. So I just go and I walk by faith. So even when things look huge to me, I say, God, I know you're with me, so let's go. Just make the way. And if I know or if I feel that it's not the right way and Holy Spirit is saying, ah, uh -uh, this is not right, you need to listen to that. Because God is leading you and he's guiding you. So the word for today is God is doing the healing. He's changing things. He's moving things. He's bringing the people into your life. He's providing. The glory of the latter will be greater. So you're coming into the best days. And sometimes that can be when you're way older. So you just, all you have to do is look at Moses. Look at David. You can, God can tell you what you're going to be. He'll show you. And it might seem so big you don't believe it. But that's where you have to believe. You have to have faith. You have to trust him. You have to believe. But if you're going to sit there with your tent up. Moaning and complaining. Comparing yourself to others. Poor me. Sad. You can stay there. Absolutely stay there all you like. And you can pray and pray and pray. But if you don't get up and move forward. You will stay there. But you're not going to do that. In Jesus Christ's name. So things are changing. Things are going to get better. So God is saying stay strong. And he is inviting you to come to him. And let him do that work. So everyone else you have to live. So it's not your responsibility to do this. And rush after and care for all this. Even like pastors. They're there to minister. 
They also need healing themselves. They also need refreshing themselves. They're there to equip you. The, the fivefold ministry. So you need to understand that. So you don't hang off them. You listen to them. They're there to equip you. You go to God. You go to God. Holy Spirit's in you. Talk to him. He lead you and guide you. People will pray for you. So don't run to man all the time. And that's where people get messed up as well. Where they depend on people. And then they get hurt. They get offended. They blame people. They become angry and bitter. When it's not their fault. We're all there for each other. We are the body of Christ. The church. Amen. So Father in Jesus name. Lord we just thank you for this word. Thank you Father. Thank you Jesus Christ our Lord. Our Saviour. Thank you for healing us. Lord, I just pray for healing for your people right now, whether it's emotionally, physically, in their mind, in their heart, God, that we release it all to you right now. We let it go, all the baggage, Lord, in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, have your way in their jobs, their family, their life, their mind, their body. We lay down the past. Every words that were spoken, we renounce them that were evil, that were curses that have hurt, that were arrows, anything that came at us, anything that came at them, we break it now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading us, for guiding us into righteousness. Have your way in us, God. We thank you, Father, that we're coming into the greater times. Let us not be deceived, going from the left or to the right, but the right way that you want us to go. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. Thank you for your grace that helps us in time of need. We receive our healing today and we thank you for this new shift. We thank you for the keys. We thank you for your mercy that you're so loving and you're so kind. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know, when you come into the presence of God, you can be healed in a moment. There's groups there. There's things that you can attend for weeks, months, years. But in the presence of God, there's pleasures forevermore. And joy and peace, restoration, healing. And that's something God is doing. He's restoring. He's putting the armour back on his people. Where they were wounded on the ground. Or where they have built a tent. Of self-pity. Comparing themselves with others. Fear. Anger. Unforgiveness. Let it go. And move forward. In Jesus name. So God bless you. Thank you for listening. Keep going. And stay strong. In Jesus name.